Drake had graduated from high school and moved away from home to begin college. When he arrived at the school, he was in great shape and ready to go, weighing in at 165 pounds. Eight months later, he was shocked to realize he had put on 40 pounds and couldn't walk up two flights of stairs without breaking a sweat. He looked back at how his weight changed and recorded it in the table below. Use the table to answer the following questions. Looking at the table, notice how the first row is the time in months and the second row is the weight in pounds. Notice how his weight goes from 165 pounds to 205 pounds, a gain of 40 pounds mentioned above. If we plot these ordered pairs on the coordinate plane, we can see how his weight is increasing faster over the first four months and is still increasing over the last four months but not increasing as fast. Notice how the data is not exactly linear because we cannot sketch a line that would pass through all nine points. For the first question, we're asked to find Drake's average weight gain per month, which would be the average rate of change for the fall semester, which would be from month zero to month four. To find the average rate of change of a function over a given interval, we want to find the change in the function value divided by the change in the input value, or in our case, the change in weight divided by the change in months. So to find the average rate of change from t equals zero to t equals four, we want to find the change in the weight and divide by the change in time, which would be w of four minus w of zero, which would be the change in the weight, divided by four minus zero, which is the change in the time. Well, w of four, or the weight after four months is 195 pounds, minus the weight at zero months, or the starting weight of 165, divided by four, this would be 30 divided by four, or 7.5. So the average rate of change over this interval is 7.5, but this means that Drake gained on average 7.5 pounds per month during the fall semester, or from month zero to month four. If we go back to the graph just for a moment, the average rate of change would be the slope of the line passing through the point when t equals zero and t equals four, or the slope of this line here. Next we want to find the average rate of change, or the average weight gain per month for the spring semester, which would be from month four to month eight. So now the average rate of change, or the change in the weight, divided by the change in the time, would be w of eight minus w of four, divided by eight minus four. Well, w of eight would be the ending weight of 205, minus w of four, which is 195, divided by eight minus four is four. So here we have 10 divided by four, which is 2.5. So the average rate of change over this interval is 2.5, which means Drake gained on average 2.5 pounds per month over this time interval or during the spring semester. Now we're asked to find Drake's average weight gain for the entire school year and again round to one decimal place. So now for the entire school year, the change in the weight divided by the change in the time would be w of eight minus w of zero divided by eight minus zero. Well, w of eight is 205, w of zero is 165 divided by eight. Notice how this change here is a total weight gain of 40 pounds divided by eight, which is equal to five. So over the entire school year, the average rate of change is five, which means Drake gained on average five pounds per month during the first year of college or over the two semesters. Now for our last question, we're asked, do the data points in the table define a perfectly linear function? As we mentioned earlier, because we cannot sketch a line that would pass through all of these points or all nine points, this is not perfectly linear. And it's not perfectly linear because we found that the average rate of change is not constant. So we'll say no, 
the data is not perfectly linear because the average rate of change is not constant. And then finally, during what time period is the weight gain perfectly linear? Well, if it's perfectly linear, then the average rate of change, or the weight gain per month, would be constant. So we look at the pattern here, and notice how here we have a gain of nine pounds, here we have a gain of eight pounds, here we have a gain of seven pounds. Notice how the weight gain is not constant. Here we have a gain of six pounds, a gain of five pounds, a gain of two pounds, another gain of two pounds, and then a gain of one pound. So notice how the weight gain per month is only constant from month five to month seven. So in the homework here, this should say month. So we'll say month five to month seven. I hope you found this explanation helpful.